This will be my recap of episode six of The Wheel of Time. In today's video, I'm gonna break down what happened in the episode, I'll tell you what I liked, what I did not like, and I'll give a score for the episode. So let's dive into episode six of Wheel of Time, season two, titled Eyes Without Pity. So before getting into the recap, take a second and like the video. And if you're enjoying the content, subscribe to the channel. All I make is Wheel of Time related content here. And there is a ton of content around the show, around the book series on the channel, including super detailed lore videos, breakdowns of the show, all of that. If that's your type of thing, go ahead and subscribe. But let's dive into the episode. And this one was an emotional ride. We are going to kick things off with Rand. At the end of last season, Rand had gone to sleep to meet with Lanfear, who was waiting for him. In the world of dreams, he's tied up to a wheel. She's sitting on a throne, staring at him. They speak. She tells him that she can help him. She's been protecting him. She also tells him that if he wants to work with her, then he needs to leave Moraine. So when he wakes up, Rand does tell Moraine that he's leaving her, to keep her alive at least. And then we next see Rand back in the dream. This time seemingly being taunted by a Shamael again, who is telling Rand that he's going to kill all of his friends. But then Lanfear appears, doing her very best Trinity impression from the Matrix. She sends a Shamael away, probably to build some trust with Rand. She apologizes to him for lying and then tells him that she will take him to see any one person that he wants. I have a feeling she knew who he would want to see. She takes him to see Egwene, who is being held captive by the Shan Chan. As soon as Egwene wakes up, Lanfear takes Ran away and he begs her to take him back and help her or help him get there and says that he will do anything that she wants and of course she smiles. Rand then wakes and goes to see Loghain to learn how to channel against Aes Sedai presumably or potentially the Shan Chan or maybe even Lanfear. Loghain tells him to embrace the source and teaches him how to seize it rather than surrender to it. Rand draws in a ton of Sidene and Loghain tells him that he needs to be careful or he will burn himself out. When Rand does let go of the power, he tells Loghain that there isn't enough time to learn. And then Loghain tells him that with that much power, he can do whatever the hell he wants. After Rand leaves, he turns up in the foregate and runs into Matt of all people who had just arrived in the city and was gambling. They have a reunion and Rand tells Matt that he is going to go save Egwene and Matt tells him that of course he's going to come, let him just go grab his things. Matt goes back to the room that he's staying at with Min and tells her of the encounter. Unknown to Matt, however, though, Min was visited again by a Shamael, and he told her that if she wants to get her gift removed, that she needs to make sure Matt goes with Rand. Rather than telling Matt to go with Rand, she tells Matt of the vision that she had that he would kill Rand and tells him not to go and to stay away, which of course pisses Matt off. When Rand waits for Matt where they decided to meet, Matt doesn't show, or at least doesn't let Rand know that he is there, but but after Rand had left Moraine earlier, she begins writing letters to Swan, telling her that she has been stilled. They've been corresponding, but she is interrupted by Barthanis, her nephew, and then her sister. Moraine dismisses them both very callously, She's and she's even called out on this by her sister. Oliver tells Moraine that she wants her gone from the city, wants her gone from their house, but Moraine tells her that it is actually her house, and that Oliver and her son are only there by Moraine's good graces, which of course gets her to leave. Lan is still with Alana and her warders, and they confront him about why he had a poem about Lanfear. In questioning him and accusing him of being a dark friend, he tells them that he, they found the dragon reborn. So then we see Lan stopping the carriage of the Amarlin seat and telling her that to speak with her about Moraine. The Amarlin arrives then in Kyrian, calling 14 Aes Sedai to join her, all there asking to see Moraine. That morning, Moraine apologizes to Barthanis, and then Oliver arrives and tells her of the Amarlin's arrival and that she wants to see Moraine. In the foregate, Ran decides to leave as he's determined that Matt is not coming, but as he tries to leave, Lan blocks his way, backed by Alana and her warders. In the main plot line of the episode, and the emotional part of this episode, are all of the scenes in fault. We pick up with Nynaeve, Elaine, Rima, and her warder. Now, Rima tells them that she was sent by the Amarlin to investigate the Shan Chan, and that the other sisters that were with her were all captured. She attempts to arrange passage for the girls to leave on a mysterious riverboat with a captain that she knows, somebody that we are very likely familiar with, and I'm hoping we see again, but they decline and say they are not leaving without a Gwen. When she sees that they're determined, Rima shows them the IDOM that she has, the device that the Shan Chan used to control women who can channel, and she tells him that they need to figure out how to open it if they're going to rescue Egwene. The three of them attempt to open it with the one power, but they need to be very careful not to attract the Shan Chan. While attempting to channel it open, Nynaeve accidentally channels a surge of the one power into it, and the Shan Chan notice the house that they're staying in. Rather than allowing all three of them to be captured, Rima goes down to face the Shan Chan and tells the girls to stay in the attic so they can keep trying to save everybody. 
everybody. Rima and her warder fight off quite a few Sean Cham, and Rima literally breaks a few Suldam and Damani until she's finally collared after the death of her warder. All of this happens while Nynaeve and Elaine watch, unable to help, which is heartbreaking. Egwene is thrown in a cell in the Sean Chan kennels. Her Suldam, or the person in charge of her training, is named Renna. Egwene tries to hit Renna for keeping her collared and captive, but of course, rather than hurting Renna, Egwene takes all of the pain and gets knocked off her feet. Renna explains that any pain she attempts to inflict on her will be put back on Egwene twice or more over. Egwene fantasizes about hitting Renna over the head with a jar in her cell, but then Egwene can't even touch that water jar anymore without a crazy amount of pain, as she cannot touch any items that she wants to use as a weapon against her Suldam. Renna continues to torture Egwene, telling her to pour her a glass of water, knowing that as long as she wants to hurt Renna, she will not be able to touch that jar of water. And in between torture, Egwene takes solace in a tree outside of her cell. It looks pretty, but in the very next training, Renna demonstrates her control over channeling, or at least Egwene's channeling, and forces Egwene to burn the tree to a crisp because she knows Egwene likes it, and then beats her when she's unable to pour the water. Eventually, Renna begins to choke Egwene, hanging her by the collar on the wall, and then when she finally lets Egwene off the wall through her tears, Egwene finally breaks, giving in and submitting to the Suldam, a broken person, and she is able to pour the water. It's a very painful moment, made more painful by the fact that the person in the cell next to her is Maigon, a sitter of the Blue Aja, who tells Egwene that she made it far longer than she did before she was broken. Well, that was an emotionally packed episode. Uh, let's start with the things I loved from this episode, and I will not bury the lead. The scene stealers here were the parts with Egwene being captive. Obviously, I don't love that part, but it was done so well. This was exactly the emotional ride that I was expecting when I knew that we were getting Egwene's captivity. This was done brutally well, and it illustrated very well to me how awful the Shan Chan are and how awful the IDOM is. And Madeline Madden, I mean, damn. Some of these performances this year have been top-notch, and this was simply outstanding. Incredible performance on a very tough subject. All the kudos to her. The Dynamic and interactions with Renna were superbly done, even if the content is centered on torture, captivity, and the breaking of somebody's will. Renna was evil in all of the right ways. The Shan Chan in general were portrayed to be exactly what they are, conquerors with a societal system based on slavery. The scenes with Loyal and Ingtar illustrated that, with Sura forcing Loyal to do tree singing simply for her amusement. I mean, that scene actually was very poignant to me, just showing the level of control they have and how that society is structured. But to also talk about the scene with Nynaeve, Elaine, and Rima, I enjoyed Rima as a character, and her sacrifice at the end was such a strong statement about what the Shan Chan represent. It was good seeing her kick some ass before she was taken. I'm holding out for a happy ending for Rima, but I, I really did enjoy her plot. I enjoyed her sacrifice. That was really good television. That was a quality addition, in my opinion, that furthered the story. My hot take from season one was that I, even though the Steppen stuff was done well, I didn't think it belonged. It wasn't necessary. This, I thought, added to the story. But all right, let's talk talk about Moraine. And it was funny because I've watched this episode three times now. The first time through, I thought Moraine is way too cold and uncaring here. Like this is overkill. She's overdoing it. I wish they had made Moraine in the show more like Moraine from the books. And then I gave it some thought and I realized that is exactly who Maureen is. She has compassion, but she prioritizes the greater good over temporary niceties and the protection of her mission over sharing information. She takes this to the extreme in the books to her detriment, and it hurts her relationships in the books, including with Rand, including with everybody around her, and even Lan at times. So watching this happen in the show, I just thought, yeah, they're doing this well. So again, that realization made me realize that Moraine and really Rosamond's performance here are really, really good. She was outstanding in this episode, as we would expect, but I am very much looking forward to her being reunited with Swan in the next episode, or at least I hope they get reunited. Speaking of Swan, uh, we didn't get much of her, but I have to say Sophie Akinato has a serious presence about her. That is a lady that I would not want to mess with. She legitimately, I guess the best way I can describe it is she just has a power about her and there's a presence around around her, her character. I just thought it was really good. I thought her costume was great. Her demeanor is great. I love seeing her in that role. The Lanfear and Rand dynamic continues to be great. I thought it very much captured the dynamic from the book. I have a few expectations about what's going to happen with that, but I think it's being done very, very well. I also loved seeing Rand and Matt get reunited, even if it was brief. I'll talk more about this in a minute, but it brought a smile to my face to see them back together in the episode. Let's talk about a few of the things I did not like. And these all fall under three categories. Things that 
that I'm either bored by, confused by, or I hate the adaptation choice so far. Let's start with my most frequent punching bag in these reviews, and that has been the land plotline. This plotline falls into the I hate the adaptation and I'm confused by category. I despise currently how this is playing out. I don't like considering Lan as a dark friend because of a poem. I feel like that's a huge jump in conclusions for Alana and her warders. I think it was ridiculous that he said out loud that he and Moraine had found the dragon reborn because he knows how important that is. I don't love him and Alana in her warders just tracking down the Amerlin when she's in a moving carriage and then making it seem like an attack just so he can go, it's about Moraine. None of that felt right to me, even if the result is getting all of the major players like the Amerlin, Moraine, Lan, Ray and Leandrin and Varen, all the way to Kyrian to play out what I would expect to be the opening scenes from The Great Hunt. How we got there, though, to me was a bit ridiculous. But let's move to another I hate the adaptation choice, and that is both Min and Matt, so far at least. I'm hoping and expecting a big payoff for this, but I don't feel like either character right now accurately reflects their book characters. And I'm okay with plot changes. I've said that all along, as long as the characters feel authentic, and I don't feel like either of the characters right now feels like their book character. And it's not that it's terrible to watch. Don't has been fantastic as Matt. I actually like Kai Alexander's performance as Min. Their characters have not been terrible. It's simply just compared to the book characters, they feel the furthest from those characters of all of the ones in the show right now to me. I really need to see a big payoff here to justify what's going on with them, some of the changes to their plot arcs that just don't make sense to me. I really need to see a big payoff there. And the last thing that falls into the I'm just bored with it category is Moraine's stilling or whatever that is. They mentioned in this episode again that she is stilled and if that's a permanent thing, then that's a bad decision to keep one of the cooler characters from being cool. If it's not a permanent thing, then it's very predictable that it's going to get fixed, and it was obviously just made to try and give a plot point. Either way, I don't think it's made Moraine more fun to watch, in my opinion. I would have been equally compelled by all of the things she's done this season, even if she could still channel. I don't think her not being able to channel has really affected much of what she's done. She wouldn't have been able to go after Lanfear either way. But here's the thing with this episode as a whole. I really, really loved it. This is my favorite episode of the season, even though it was really just a setup episode for the two finale episodes. They absolutely nailed the tone from what I wanted to see on Egwene's captivity, and that was really important to me in this adaptation. Empire Strikes Back is my favorite Star Wars movie, and the bad guys trying to win there. This felt like the Empire Strikes Back episode to me, so it's no wonder that I liked it. The things I didn't like weren't really things that happened in this episode, but more outside of the Men and Matt thing, but are really more things that I just don't like about the adaptation so far, so they really don't apply to this episode. This was an outstanding episode of television, and while I doubt it will be remembered as much as maybe some other episodes might be, just because those have bigger moments in them, this was extremely well written, it was well executed, and the performances on a very touchy subject were pretty incredible. I'm going to give episode 6 of Wheel of Time Season 2 an 8.5 out of 10. How did you score this episode? Let me know in the comments of the video. What did I get right? What did I get wrong? Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content. Huge thank you to my patrons who support this channel with their own money. I appreciate all of you. If you want to support the content that I make, please consider checking out the Patreon link in the description of the video. And if you liked this video, you will probably like one of these right here. Thank you for watching and until next time, peace out.